come running every time. Every time. drop me and PD off. Me and PD are probably gonna walk what is about eight, nine, ten miles today. Yeah. So we're walking at Brass Town Falls up here in Long Creek, South Carolina. We're gonna set up camp, test out a bunch of gear. So hope you guys enjoy and we'll uh we'll get back with you whenever we get there. Yep, you ready? Let's hit it. Alright, let's go. Alright guys, we have uh started our adventure. We're doing 9.4 yeah. miles today. What changes have you made to your bag? I've actually changed my bag to this camouflage real tree hunting bag. This bag was actually bigger than my outdoors Walmart bag that we was using. So I felt like it gave me more space to put more stuff inside of. But then like I said, I've also upgraded my stove system, upgraded my cookware system. I've changed from the one liter bottles like PD has got to the 1.5 liter bottles. So that adds an extra two pounds. I put maps and compasses in my bag. That's about it. So one thing to remember is you want to carry cash in your get home bag. Our original location, we were going to hike. We were going to come across a little grocery store looking thing. Hey, you know, walk in there, 10 bucks, get some peanuts or a drink. Get something to kind of carry you on. Say it's 5.30, 6 o'clock. Companies are already going to be starting to set up dinner, especially buffet style joints. So you can walk in there, pay five bucks cash, fill your belly up and keep on walking on. You know, look at New York that just had their power outage. People were still walking home in that situation, but there was still shops and little bakeries and stuff like that that kept their doors open so they could make a little extra money. You know, walk into like a grocery store and get a bunch of meat or things that are going to go bad anyway for a discounted price. So you can always get a hotel for overnight stay as well. So just a little tip. So I'm using the 1.5 liter water bottles, the Z-Packs water bottle holder. Um, it's a whole lot more convenient having your water right here than trying to reach back here and get it. Essentially, it does bounce a little bit, but I know it's there. I can feel a lot less weight off my bag, like especially this one side. Easy to take off. I've just got it around in between my pants and my belt. Get a drink of water, then put it back on, and now I'm good to go. Hi right, guys, we're uh, a little over two miles in. It's been about an hour. Woo! So we still have a long ways to go. How you feeling? Ah. I'm a little tired. Yeah. yeah, me too. Mainly right here where these buckles are at on my bag. It's kind of like a pinch point. I don't know if it's just because I don't have it strapped right or what. But yeah, that right there is the main uncomfort spot. Just my right knee is hurting a little bit. Nothing like too horrible. I got my work pants on just because if it is a get home situation between my two jobs, I'm probably going to be wearing these pants. The 511s don't breathe too much. Like my legs, you can tell they're sweating, but it's it's a perfect day to be doing this. The first way is 4.7. So once we hit the end of the road, we'll turn back around and head down to it. The GH is probably setting up camp right now or asleep in the truck, one of the two. So he's, he's staying at the campsite. So yeah, we'll see you in a little bit. If you're bugging out, if you're trying to get home, you do not want to be on the side of the road putting up a shelter because there's gonna be people that want what you have. What you would wanna do is you'd wanna get off the road, like here, and wanna get off over into the woods somewhere and build you a hide shelter. It might just be as simple as taking your 50 gallon drum liner, putting it over your head like a poncho and leaning up against a tree. You want to be as concealed as possible. You wanna be out of the way. You don't want just a driver by to notice you. So that's my advice on that. competition for calling Bigfoot. You want to hear it? Yeah. Come here, Bigfoot! That's it. That's it. Come That's running every time. Every time. That's how you find Bigfoot. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how it happens. So we just hit uh, 4.7 miles. Now we're walking back downhill. Thank God. To the campsite. The last mile was just about all uphill. So what is that? A little over an hour and 45 minutes? Yeah. To do four miles. So we're making pretty good time. Tired? Very. 
Yeah. Starting to chafe. Uh, baby feet powders. Hurt. Yeah, baby powder be hit. Feet are starting to hurt. Definitely got to get some new shoes. Nothing I couldn't live with. The reason we're not doing like a full 20 or nothing like that is A, we're just trying to test this gear. Once we get everything situated, then we might do a longer trek. It might be the situation where you can only do 10 miles for a get home bag, whether it's dark, whether it's just pouring down rain, whether it's too cold. So 10 miles ain't too bad, you know, for a day. If I had to get home from work, we're looking at about four hours to do 10 miles almost. So, you know, that would take me eight hours. Halfway there, feeling all right? Oh yeah, doing good. We'll probably need to drink more water. I'm maybe half a bottle down on my liter and a half and you're about three quarters on my first liter. Yeah, so we definitely need to intake some more water. Now PD's testing out the z -Pax water bottle holder. How you liking it? I, it's working pretty good. I mean, I got my water right here in arm's reach. I'm not having to ask you to, you know, go through my bag and get it out for me. So, I mean, it's working pretty good. It's right here. If I drop it, I'll know it. I'm getting kind of hungry. Kind of didn't have no lunch or nothing before we took off. So I'm actually going to go in my bag and get something that you don't have to necessarily like stop to eat something. Uh, one thing I pack, pop tarts. Pop -tarts. I had to take my bag off, of course, to get to it, but I'm gonna zip it up, take back off, and uh, I'll be eating this on the road. At 400 easy calories, takes the place of a meal, and ain't gotta cook it, ain't gotta do nothing with it. So, all right, y'all, we'll get back at it. Six point seven. We still got about 2.7 to go. These boots are killing me. I'm wearing the Under Armour combat boots. They're comfortable for day-to-day -day use, but for this, nah. Gonna be looking at a new pair. Back of my legs are killing me. Back of my knees. I can manage. We're doing a decent pace. We're not pushing ourselves. We're not running or anything. I'm down one water bottle. This left in my first water bottle, and then I still have another liter but going to be needing water soon. One thing y'all need to look at is on your way home, whether from work, whether from a store, is your water sources and how you can get water. We've passed a couple, but there's been fences in the way, it's private property, you know, it's not a down situation, so we don't necessarily need to jump a fence to go get water. I know on this gravel road up here, there's some water sources we can get to easier, and I'm not out of water, he's not out of water, so we're doing pretty all right. If I had to walk home, I know there's a stretch where I go probably five to 10 miles without water. So if I'm doing that real world situation, I know that I need to camel up at my last water source because I know that dry stretch is coming. So y'all just be on the lookout for all that. We're about eight, nine miles in. Yeah. How you feeling? Tired, man. Yeah. I'm ready to get back to the campsite, make a cup of coffee. Go ahead and do it now. Man, by the time I set my bag down, get my pot out, get my burner out, and get my water and get it up to a boil, we'll already be to the campsite. Ain't no point in waiting. You want one of these? What is it? It's a coffee pouch. This one's a quarter cup of coffee. You put it in your lip. About 30 seconds later, you're gonna feel the warming effects of coffee. Nicotine, no tobacco. You can take them on planes, trains, at work, driving, or out here where you can't find a coffee pot. Whenever you get home, go to getgrinds.com. Find your flavor you like. So many good flavors. Everything from black coffee to sweet caramel. All right, check them out. Man. I'm good, I'm good, let's go. All right, let's hit it. All right, guys, we're almost back. Feeling rough, but feeling good. We did the full what is it, 9.4? 4.7 each way. One and a half each way is on gravel. So that's kind of been getting to us a little bit. Gravel and moving and shifting wears your feet out on a little bit. You hurting anywhere? Feet, calf muscles, really that's just about it. Finally about two miles in, I finally got my bag figured out, got it adjusted right to where this, uh, these clips aren't bothering me no more. I mean, it's been all right. The 1.5 bottle over here is empty. This one's still full, so I've got three extra pounds pulling me to my left. And if it was a longer trek, I would even out the bottles or refill my bottle. But we're almost here, so there's really no point in filling them up now. We've been gone close to three and a half, four hours. We're gonna get up here and set up kind of like almost primitive camp. Yeah, really, I mean, bare minimalist, I feel. So no sleeping bags, you took your hammock out. Yep. It's gonna be an interesting night. Two days ago, it was 90 something degrees. and now yesterday, actually. Yeah. 90, 96 yesterday and like 69 today, so yeah. you can't beat that. These Arctic Cool shirts have done absolutely fantastic. I'm blown away with the Arctic Cool gear in total with the hat and all. Really, it's just it's worked perfectly. So y'all be sure to check them out. They're like Under Armour. Under Armour like sticks to your skin, and I, I'm not a fan of that. You can tell that it's had a little moisture on it from us sweating. It's just a nice shirt. Every time the wind blows, you get a nice cool breeze right here in the chest and the stomach area so oh, yeah let the breeze blow for a little bit 
and I'm and sure the, that'll dry out on this. Yeah, is. the hat's great. Like I've really enjoyed it, absorbing the sweat. sweat pretty good, keeping the sweat out of my eyes and everything else. It's worked great. It's actually a lightweight hat. I mean, to be honest, I've kind of forgotten I was even wearing it. So all these Arctic Cool products, they get cooler with sweat, but also you can put a little bit of water on them. And I know you do that to your hat. Yeah, he said it was like putting a freaking ice block on his head yeah, so for real. i think you'd like yours better on than off yeah really like i said it's been a great product i really enjoyed it we're almost done at least with the hiking part and uh yeah we'll let you know when we get to camp after not seeing him for three and a half hours we thought you were dead a little thinner a little a little saw your micro action I thought my tarp was bigger than what it is. I kind of thought it was the same size as GH's. As I ran paracord straight across between two trees here, tied the tarp onto the paracord. Then to hold it tight, pulling it left and right, I had cut a piece of paracord about a foot section, took the seven strands out of the center and ran it to the tie point on the tree so that it would be pulled tight. Ran my two stakes in the back corners and front corners on the bottom. It'll get me by through the night. If we were going to be out here for more than 24 hours, I would probably recommend us all pulling our stuff together and making one big shelter. We're all comfortable with each other, you know. We know nobody's gonna try to do anything throughout the night. And you can speak <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> you can edit that. How you doing? So hey guys, GH. I have the Hobo Mansion. Everything's strung together, paracord between two trees. One thing is I got a privacy, privacy fence for the ladies, you know. It doubles as a hangover, <laughs> so my inside don't get wet, besides the points I want to. I'll live in it for a night, and probably never again. Same concept as both of them. Tarp, pin down. I have this trash bag, and it's gonna go over. I ain't figured out how yet uh, I'm gonna tie it to this side though. But just in case it rains, I'll have a little bit more waterproofing. We're going to do three different filter systems and show y'all just how fast they flow. Saw your mini first. All right, so here we go. That was the saw your mini. Saw your micro time speed test. Four seconds for the Sawyer Micro. All right, guys, up next is the Hydro Blue. I bought this one because I heard that the Sawyer Micro squeeze clogs up a lot. A lot of people complain that it don't work with the smart water bottles. It does, you just have to put it on really tight, so I think that's gonna affect it, but we'll find out. All right guys, so the Hydro Blue is at 109, faster than the Mini, a little bit slower than the Micro. You have to tighten this down so hard on these bottles that it does waste your time and energy trying to get a mic off to burp. But you have to burp the bottle, so I'll do a at-home test for this and compare it to the Micro and the Mini for the knock water bags and see how well they work against those. We're doing the uh, bring water to a bowl challenge. I'm using the knockoff GSI cup with the E-Tech City stove. I'm using the MSR rocket. I'm also using the MSR titanium cook pot. I'm gonna use the uh, Stanley cook pot and I'm using a Coleman Peak uh, burner. So we're also doing this challenge right now because we're wanting to make coffee. So we felt like this was an appropriate time to do this challenge. Give y'all an idea of just what type of cook systems we use. Both of them are rolling bowls at three minutes. I've got massive bubbles going on. So I was at 315, 320. So they're all pretty much equal. One advantage that me and Brian have over Jesse is weight. One thing Brian has over mine is his has a flint striker. It's all in preference. I had heard good reviews on the MSR and I wanted the cook system itself. 
that's why I got this one. This entire kit costs right at $75. So I think mine was maybe five bucks for the GSI knockoff cup from Walmart and less than 20 for the E-Tech CD stove. GH, how much did uh, yours cost? Uh, it was 15 for the cup around about and about 20 for the burner. So you can go very cheap versus very expensive and they're all about the same. We didn't really see where one had an advantage over the other. It's just all in preference. Yep. Go out and get what you like, what you want, what you can afford, what you can afford. There's GH and his little shack. Anything you wish would have? Not really, we'll just go see how the night goes. We'll find out in the morning. Anything you wish you had? A camper. I wish I'd had more tarps and maybe a blow up mat of some sort to lay on. GH, you have a sleeping bag liner. Yeah, I got an emergency blanket. I got the hoodie. And then I have an extra trash bag that if I need to, I will make into like a poncho type deal to try to conserve more body heat. Here's my little hobo shack. I do have a inflatable pillow from Outdoor Vitals that we're gear testing. I got some leaves up under the bottom, trying to keep me a little bit off the ground. And I've got a trash bag rigged up on top and then staked out. My idea for using a trash bag as a cover shelter and then sleeping in one was not a good idea because that trash bag is a little bit short. Morning of day two survived it rained a bit last night so those blood droplets stayed dry survival sleep bag we did okay condensation sucks on these things though but this is probably like six and a half foot tall so it's nice the chance to fit in it jacket was a pillow at some point in time it got soaking wet they're alive shelter systems <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was not, it was not good. <laughs> it was not good. Yeah, about it. No. If, you're, if you're not a goat, don't, don't recommend do it. it, yeah. <laughs>